How's it going, everybody? Hope you're all doing well. So, 10 items that you forgot to put in your Minuteman kit, or your Red Dawn kit, or Go to War kit, or whatever kit, or, you know, Airsoft kit, you know, training kit, whatever it is. We're going to dive into things that I've experienced over an entire, you know, half of a career, about 10 years or more, in different places and environments, things that have occurred and, you know, helped me through things. And when I look at YouTube, some people are missing them. So I figured I'd give that information out. So first off, one of the main items that I always carry with me is a notebook. Just a simple write in the rain notebook, mainly because I can write stuff down. Of course, duh. But I'm saying when you're going to a location, doing things, you might have tasks you need to accomplish or maybe reports or a description of a home or a location or a building or terrain, rather than remembering it, you can write it down and then, oh, okay, what, what, how many, you know, location was that? Oh, okay, there, yeah, there it is. You know, what color was it again? Or if you obtain information from someone, something, observing, you can write that information down and then bring it back and then be like, hey, this is what I saw. Or you just like taking notes Hey, expended, you know, how many rounds or, you know, magazines or lost this item, need to replace this item. Or just like this, if you are out and not, I'm like, man, I should really bring that along with me. Write it down. Bring this next time. Close it up because you're probably going to forget after six hours of doing a whole bunch of crazy stuff. Notebook. They're always in my kits along with certain pens and other things like that. Writing utensils. Next, the other item that is super important is to take care of your feet. Because without this, or with this entire kit, what is your main means of transportation? Your feet. You are walking. And if you don't take care of them properly, you ain't going anywhere and you ain't performing your mission. So I see socks literally left out all the time in kits. Even if they're like, oh, I'm only going to be out for like, you know, a couple hours. Yeah, didn't that happen in the whole, you know, after action report of Black Hawk Down? You know, that whole incident or um, Gothic Serpent, I guess it was considered. I think that was the operation that they did. And they're like, oh, we don't need NVGs. We're only going to be gone two hours. Mm. Yeah, about that. Anyways, so socks. Put socks. Make your feet happy. Because if you do not make your feet happy, you ain't going anywhere. You ain't doing stuff. Put socks in there. Trust me. You'll thank me later. Next. Might be a little bit odd for this type of scenario. Now, some of you probably aren't in this category to need this item, but for certain people that have this item that I'm about to talk about, you will need it and it's very overlooked. So if you're doing specific you know, operations or whatnot, and there are chemical warfare being utilized, you're more than likely gonna run a gas mask of some sort. Makes sense, but if you're doing things at night, you're gonna have a helmet on as well. These two do not like to work together too well, especially if you're running around with this helmet, you know, chilling and doing night vision and nighttime stuff, and you're like, ooh, I think that's CS, and then whoop, and then put your helmet back on, now it's all goofy. A simple, effective tool is a chin strap extension. Literally, you clip it into the same chin strap and it makes it longer, because once you put on your gas mask, your chin is now taken up and you need to kind of push it back because you can't use your chin. You're going to have to use underneath, you know, further back. This extends it and now you can wear your gas mask and your helmet together with no issues. Trust me, I've been in that situation. I've had to run the gas mask and then put back on the helmet, try to run NVGs at the same time. You're like, mm, like how do I, I've never thought about this. This is stupid. Why, no, why did no one tell me about this? Saving you the hassle right now. If you have a gas mask and you're planning on running one, select few of you, I get it. But if you do, 10 bucks, worth it. Next for an item, kind of odd, and they're kind of two together, is actually having a cleaning rod. Not for cleaning, but mainly for pushing out stuck cases out of certain pew pewers if they decide to jam on you. Now, most of the time, if you buy a quality weapon system and you are running it properly, cleaning it properly on normal schedules, you shouldn't have any issues. But one stuck case in a chamber can end an entire system worth of, you know, or an individual of being 
more effective. You might have to go to a secondary. Less effective than a larger weapon system. Having this very lightweight can just tap that thing out, be done. Also, carry a small bottle of CLP. Especially if you run with a team, there's always someone that probably like, oh, I had a malfunction or something like that. And then you can just like, cool, I put that in there. Cool, it's done. We'll take care of it later. You just need to lube it up to get that lubricity going for normally the bolt. And then you're pretty much gone, good to go. Dry bolt in AR type weapon systems definitely have hindrances and make them sluggish. So I carry a little tiny bottle of CLP just in case. Next item on that list is if you're doing nighttime based stuff, even if you do not have night vision or at all, you're just doing night operations, a small red light of some sort will help you immensely. It is less powerful than a white light. And people, if you white up a white light, you know, somewhere out in a field, literally miles away, they're like, hey, there's a person out there. Like they can just immediately see you. But if you do a very dim red light, you can still manage to do what you need. Maybe it's map orienteering basis, GPS basis. Maybe you're setting up something. Maybe you're setting up a ladder or, you know, like a hide site or something like that, you know, to get on top of a roof or whatever. Just a simple little bit of light can help you, especially when you turn it off and on. Now you can run them on your head, uh, your helmet, which I have here. I have IR available, red and white, and they each have different settings, so it works so you know what you're on. White light helps, or red light helps immensely, less intense. Next on that list is detainment-based items. So if you go do and have a nice fun party, but you don't want other people crashing your party or like you show up and there's other people you don't like and you don't want them getting in the way of your party, um, you can detain them temporarily. Like zip, zip, okay, cool. Keep them off to the side while we're performing our tasks because you don't want them to, you know, get involved and, you know, mess stuff up. For instance, if uh, you're going upstairs from your basement and your brother is after the cookies, well, you can detain your brother really quick while you eat the cookies, and then afterwards you can release him and go, cool, be on my day, be on your way. I already ate my cookies, you know? Simple stuff like that. Don't let people get in the way. Detainment-based items. Next, big thing that I see always missing, and a lot of people harp on this too. I'm not the only one. Hydration. You have all this weapon systems. You have all these ammunition and cool guy stuff, but you don't have water. And if you don't have water, you're not performing more than three, four hours. You're done. It's worse than the socks. I'd rather go with water and go without socks than the other way around, personally. So I use these hydro flasks myself. They, you know, expand up really nice, put water in them. They're reasonably durable, but then you can, you know, compress them back down and then toss them somewhere. And then if you want to refill them, then you can refill them. Cool. Water, water bladder, water bottle, something like that. Have water on you. And to kind of coincide in the next item, have a place to put that water. Have a dedicated pouch or maybe an, a general purpose pouch, maybe a dump pouch like I have here on my belt kit as a particular location to put water. I can just stuff it in there and good to go. I can be on my way. Because you have water, but where am I going to put it? Okay, I got all this gear, but mm, cargo pocket maybe? And then it's just like hassling. Just have a dedicated pouch or pocket for water. You'll thank me later, trust me. Next, one item. Very simple to get. Ha! Huh. Ziploc bag. Wow. Pretty thick one. Why? Because I put my maps inside of it. Paper maps. Because when it decides to rain on you, which I guarantee it will, right when you think it's a great day and you're going to go out and do stuff, it is going to rain on you. And your maps are going to get soaking wet and you can't see any of your rally points. You can't see where you're going and then you're going to guess and then you're going to miss it and then someone's going to get very upset with you or worse. So a simple Ziploc bag will alleviate all that problem. Slip your maps in there, put it to the right thing, and then you can also take pens and write on that map case. And then you can wipe it off later on after you're done. So you make all your rally points and all that stuff. So if you get compromised, wipe that stuff all off and be like, I don't know where we were going. It doesn't say, it's a blank map. Yeah, because you wrote it all on here and now you erased it. Opsec, right? 
Cool, little things like that. Have a map case, it'll save you. I hate soggy maps. I'm very passionate about it because I've been in that situation before. All right, so lastly, I think I've been through everything that I want to discuss except for one last thing, and it is batteries for your specific devices and have them readily available. Now, you don't need to take this big old case. I just keep my batteries in here, and before I go out, there's batteries pre-positioned all over here, but this is a case in one location. Now, of course, I have all different types, you know, the 1 in 3N, which is like the aim point battery, which is super hard to come by, and I don't even know why they did it. But then you got double A's, triple A's, CR123's, you know, all that kind of stuff. Well, after you have that, and 2032's, those are also really handy to have as well. Well, you have them, but do you know where they are? Now, I picked this up from, um, you know, a ranger and whatnot doing stuff, and he and his team had pre-positioned locations of batteries. Hey, left cargo pocket on your sleeve had triple A's and had uh, 2032 batteries. They knew they could go there. Now, on the other side was CR123s and double A's. So they, they're they each a different feel. So you know, okay, cool, I'm going in here. Not the flat battery, double A battery, or triple A battery. It feels vastly different. And then, or you could flip them and do double A's over here and then triple A's, because triple A and a CR123 definitely feel completely different. Because you're like, ah. But it's really easy. If you're doing something with your you know, particular items, and an item goes out like a flashlight, and then you're like, oh, okay, where's my batteries at? And then you're like, oh, here they all are in the same pouch. Space them out so you can just go in there. Oh, that's CR123. Flip it in, turn. Okay, we're back on. 30 seconds later, you're still progressing without hindering your team at all. So, pre positioning batteries or other used items, or it's just smart. And if you have the budget, every time you go out, swap all your batteries. A little expensive. If it's a real, real or a real world situation, it's going to be worth it. Anyways, other than that, I think I carry or covered a lot of you know real world stuff that has happened to me or that I have used in the past that has worked to you know great extents, and I've liked it. So I want to pass that on. I've seen a lot of these items; it just doesn't work for some people, and I want to pass that on. So if you like this kind of stuff, definitely consider Patreon. If you want to see behind the scenes stuff, get to know me, my family. Patreon gets all that kind of stuff. You get early access stuff. If you don't care about me or my family and just want to enjoy the content, but you may want to donate, there's PayPal as well. But if you don't want to do any of that, just hit subscribe and keep looking out for videos because I'm just going to keep producing them regardless. I make money, I, make, I don't make money. It doesn't matter. I'm here to give you my real world opinions that I've actually done and, you know, kind of have a little fun along the way. But other than that, I went over all the items that you probably forgot. And if you didn't, definitely leave me, you know, a comment down there. Hey, did you forget one? Or is there something I'm missing? Or did you have all these items and you're 100% good to go? I'd like to hear from you. Other than that, hope you all have a great day.